Velkommen til Aktuelt. Hun skulle vært her for over 20 år siden og mottatt sin Nobels fredspris. I dag er Burmas frihets- og demokratihelt Aung San Suu Kyi fri igjen fra fangenskap og med oss her i Oslo. Aung San Suu Kyi, velkommen til Norge. Det er en plasje å se deg. Du burde vært her i 1991, og da du var bort fra å komme her, hadde du ikke tenkt at denne dagen skulle komme? Yes, I wasn't actually barred from coming here. I think in a way I could say I chose not to come at that time because I did not feel it was right. Mm. There were a lot of trouble in your country then. Um, how much, how much you know, of an improvement do you see now? There has been an improvement, but I've been saying repeatedly that this is just the beginning of the road to democracy. And uh, we cannot take too much for granted at this point of time. During all of these years, did you ever fear for your own safety? No, never. Never? No. You felt you were safe? I actually never thought of my situation in terms of safety or danger. I know that people talked about it, and uh, I really gave thought to what they said when they said, be careful uh, of your security, your safety. But it didn't really make sense to me, because it was not really in my hands my safety and my security. So I did not see what point there could be in thinking about it. Mm. But when you were sitting there in your house at University uh, Road, um, were you aware of that all over the world there were people having prayer vigils for you? There were even songs written for you, songs sung about you? Gradually, yes, because in the early days of my first term of house arrest, uh, there were not too many Burmese language programs on the, um, on the international media network. For example, at that time, I think the BBC had perhaps about half an hour a day, the VOA half an hour to one hour in, in the Burmese language. And of course, most of the uh, news about Burma are on those programs. So I didn't get as much news about movements to support us in the world as I got later when the times of these broadcasts were increased because of demand. Mm. And, and then, of course, there was the Radio Free Asia and uh, the Democratic Voice of Burma. But a lot of, of censorship Burma. also in your country at the time. Not, not with regard to foreign radio broadcasts. So if I had a short wave radio, and that kept me linked to the outside mm. world. I'm asking because um, straight through those years when you were in, in confinement um, and in prison, from time to time, people still looked upon you as their true leader in, in Burma. I remember in Aung San Market, just a few years ago I was there, uh, there was a woman who, who was selling pictures and she said she could not sell pictures of you when, when you were older than 12 years old. Oh. And they even only whispered your name. That's how dangerous it felt. I do remember that in uh, 1989, before I was placed under house arrest, I was placed under house arrest on the 20th of July. But uh, on uh, the week before, the 19th of July is Martyr's Day. That's the day on which my father was assassinated along with his colleagues. So they used to have on Burmese television programs about my father uh, a, a couple of weeks before Martyr's Day. And they still had a program of that kind in 1989. But I was struck by the fact that when they showed photographs, family photographs of us, uh, there was my father with my two brothers in his arms, and there was my mother with me in her arms like this. They'd cut off the photograph here so that my picture as a baby was out of the family picture. Really? Yes, I was struck by that because I was just a few months old, and they cut the photograph off where my, my mother was holding me and just showed my mother, my father and my two older brothers. That's how dangerous you were to the regime. I thought it was very funny. You thought it was yes. funny. Mm. And very silly too. But I mean, your, your personal story, your personal experience is so intertwined with, with the destiny of Burma, isn't it? I would like to think that's intertwined with the destiny of my people. All of us are in it together. Mm. Isn't that the same thing? Not, not, I don't like my destiny to be spotlighted. It's the destiny of the people of Burma that we are trying to um, 
get into our hands. Mm. But is it, do you feel it is a problem that you are standing up as a symbol? I mean, all over the world, all, and also in your own country, of course, you have been hailed as a very brave um, uh, fighter for democracy, non-violent uh, uh, fighter for democracy. Is that, is that a, a problem, do you think, that you are hailed as such a symbol? It, I always think that uh, in in politics, especially democratic politics, one should not focus too much on one person. But then, on the other hand, it always happens in such movements because it's easier to focus on one person than on a, on a whole movement. It's just that people react more, more to uh, personal, uh, to appeals to the personal emotions, if they like. Mm. So I do not think it's the best thing, but it's natural, and I'm very grateful uh, for the support that people have given me. I, although I accept that this is not really, in the ultimate analysis, it's not for me as an individual, but for the cause which I'm serving. But still, you have sacrificed a lot, wouldn't you say? I have to keep reminding people not to use the word sacrifice, because it was a choice I made. It is not a sacrifice. I decided to do what I'm doing because I thought it was the right thing to do and nobody owes me anything for that. Mm. It's not a sacrifice. But I mean when you chose not to go to your late husband's funeral, yes. that must have been a sacrifice for you in 1999. No, I think it was more of a sacrifice for my sons than for me. For me it was again a choice. I chose not to go. Mm. If I had wanted to go, I could have gone. Mm. And at that time there was a pro you thought perhaps that there would be a problem returning to, to Burma. Uh, and this is your first trip abroad since then. Do you, do you have that same fear now at all? No, I don't. You don't? There has been a change in Burma. I don't think they'll keep me from going back. I'll, otherwise, I'll have to come straight back to Norway. <laughs> Tell me, why did the generals decide to try a new policy of reforms? I think there are several reasons, one of which is that the country was obviously suffering from the regime that had not been placed for several decades. And I think they, there are uh, people in the government, starting with the president himself, who wished to put the country on a better path. Did sanctions help? Yes, I think sanctions help. People have said that sanctions do not help. But when you consider the fact that uh, the very first motion tabled in the new National Assembly was for the dismantling of sanctions. And uh, uh, when you consider the fact that again and again members of the government has asked, have asked for the removal of the sanctions, we can say that they helped. Mm. Should, we, should we lift sanctions altogether or just put them on hold now? The EU has suspended rather than lifted sanctions and uh, the United States is adopting a similar policy. And I think this is the right one because it's a way of demonstrating that uh, genuine reforms will be rewarded. But if these reforms uh, prove uh, to be a, a facade, then the rewards will be taken away again. Do you fear it's uh, reversible, that it is a facade? I don't think we should fear reversal. What we should do is to make certain that there will be no reversal. I don't think we can take it for granted that there will be no reversal, but it is for all of us who wish to put Burma on the, firmly on the path to democracy to work for it. Mm. I mean, Burma was the rice bowl of Asia when you parted from, from England, from Great Britain. Such a rich country and now so poor, so much work ahead, health-wise, education-wise. How will you cope with it? I'm not going to cope with it alone. No single person can cope with it alone. We've all got to be in this together. This is what I've been saying to the people when uh, I was campaigning for the by-elections in April. This is the message I took everywhere, that the people should not depend on me or any particular individual or organization to bring, bring about the changes that they want. They must do it for themselves. They must take part in the political process. And I was uh, very encouraged by the fact that they really understood this message and responded to it by using their power, the power of their vote in the elections. Mm.
There will be a presidential election in a few years' time. Will you run, madam? No, no, there will be no presidential elections. There will be just general elections in 2015. The president is not directly elected. But you will run, won't you? Oh, oh, our party will contest elections, yes. Thank you very much, Aung San Suu Kyi, and good luck in Burma. Thank you.